Today it is a much different organisation. It still has as a raison d'etre the security and stability of its member countries. That and first and foremost is its task. But at the same time, alongside that, it interprets that security and stability in a much wider way by forming partnerships with a, with a wide range of different countries. And the addition that this assembly makes is to help make that process more transparent, more understandable to the populations of the member countries and to the people, the taxpayers, who have to provide the finance for, the, for these activities. So the Assembly's role is, is to, to hopefully make more transparent, more understandable, and therefore hopefully support the policies of the Alliance uh, as it evolves in the way that it is at the moment. My own view is that the future of NATO Assembly is in fact a continuation of the sort of work that it's been doing over the last two decades. That is fostering cooperation within the parliaments of member countries, improving awareness, improving understanding, uh, which is uh, an, a continual battle to continue to demonstrate through parliaments uh, and to the populations of member countries um, why NATO exists and the task it's carrying out. And to do that in addition and parallel with the function of creating more and wider relationships in the same way that NATO itself is doing. Uh, partnerships with other countries, uh, partnerships which benefit those countries, but also benefit NATO member countries themselves. And in doing so, uh, broaden the areas of stability um, which, which exist and which in the end will help the security of all the member countries. So its task very much is to continue to doing what it's doing now, um, to continue to, uh, to, to, to help public understanding of the roles of the Alliance, but also uh, to foster a wider form of cooperation among parliaments from very, very different countries. The task of the leadership of the Assembly and the, the presidents who have served under the Assembly uh, was always to represent to the best of their ability the collective views of the Assembly membership. Um, and the collective views obviously cover a wide range of political parties and political views. But these individuals, their task was very much to provide the, and to lead, the internal consensus amongst the very different members of parliament of assembly countries, and to lead those countries and to represent the assembly at international functions, and to help promote uh, parliamentary diplomacy uh, through cooperation with partner countries. And that was the task of these individuals at various stages of the history of the Assembly, from the, de the, the dying days of the Cold War uh, to that very formative phase of expansion to Central and Eastern Europe, and to today's world where we face challenges of an entirely different order. The task of the President is essentially to represent the collective views of the Assembly uh, and to ensure that the, the, the policies uh, that NATO itself is carrying are understood and hopefully supported.